What do you mean reduce spending? You can't expect me to run this company if I can't spend any money. You can't keep avoiding that we are perilously close to bankruptcy. I championed three cost-saving initiatives just this quarter. What have you done? Making us all bring in our own coffee mugs instead of stocking the break room with paper cups was not nearly enough. At this rate, we won't even be able to make payroll next quarter. Now, if you'll just same old doom and gloom. Do you actually have anything constructive to contribute, Anne? If you'll look at the budget proposal that we prepared, you'll see what I'm proposing. Ugh, more cuts. This is ludicrous. Walter, our hands are tied. We don't know how long until we have a breakthrough. So unless we have the stomach to cancel some projects entirely, there's not much else we can do. Innovation is the core of what Kellent Tech stands for. I will not compromise on that. No, I would rather sell the company outright than slowly starve all of our projects to a standstill. We have to try something. Russell, I'm disappointed in you. Come up with a better plan and we'll talk, but this, this isn't going to cut it. Well, that went about as well as could be expected. You did great, Russell. That man, for once, if he could just look beyond his own ego. Ugh. There was hardly any yelling this time, though. That's progress, right? True. I think we're finally starting to wear him down. A couple more meetings like this, and I think he'll come around. I don't know how many more meetings I can take. Why can't I just stay in the lab? You want to get in the lab, you got to help me come up with a plan that Walter will swallow. Brainstorm tonight? Uh, does it have to be tonight? What? You got a hot date? Oh, wait. Do you? Well, in that case, remind me to introduce you to someone. He's a giant geek, too. You'd be perfect for each other. I think you've had enough influence on my love life already. That was eight years ago. Get over it. There's no way that could have worked out once she enlisted. You know that, right? Can we please go talk back to talking about work now? Now, if Walter says we can't make cuts, we need cash. How to get cash? We would invest this without diluting the stock to worthlessness. <laughs> and... The Department of Defense is investing quite a bit in Silicon Valley right now. They're experimenting with microfunding a lot of small ventures, rather than just continuing to pour money into the same big corporations. They've just announced a project that would be a perfect fit for us. I've already got us an interview spot with Colonel Croft, the program coordinator. Ugh. That's the best you could find? A government contract might be just the thing. Everyone knows military projects have huge budgets. All that bureaucracy, though. Is the project really going to be worth it? I've taken a look at the standard contract, and it's really quite favorable in terms of compensation for us. And if we're able to meet the bonuses for early completion, well, we'd be foolish to pass it up. Fine, but surely there are more exciting things we could be working on. More exciting than this? That's a pretty ambitious ask. I can see why they'd want our help. I mean, it's not like the military is really packed with the best and brightest, eh? Not everyone who joins up is stupid. My gr one of my college friends went into the Air Force after graduating with honors. Well, the profession isn't entirely useless, I suppose, but I'd be sorry to see any friend of mine belonging to it. That seems a bit harsh. 
Well, first, it puts the technical decisions in the hands of people whose greatest achievement is how many push-ups they can do. Second, it takes anyone with any spark of native intelligence and beats it thoroughly out of them. No, I'm afraid I'm not quite ready to give them as much credit as you do. Well, I must admit, Colonel Croft, I'm really impressed with the scope of this project. Very forward-thinking. I wouldn't have expected it, not from the Air Force at least. The other branches may call us airheads, Walter, but we do know a thing or two. Well, you're clearly very intelligent. You're just wasted on the Air Force. If you ever decide to move over to industry and really put your talents to use, you'll let me know. Yes, Colonel. Your presentation was very impressive. I can tell already that the technical team is going to love working with you. About that deliverable schedule. The first design reviews happen awfully soon. That's deliberate. I firmly believe we have to be testing parts against the spec from the very beginning. You can't rush creativity. A good plan executed now is better than a perfect plan next week. Besides, I thought you genius private sector types were all about speed. Oh, I, I was just making sure you really wanted to move that fast. Of course my team can handle it. Ah, oh, yes, the team. The dossier you prepared was impressive in the software and electronics areas, but seemed a little light on mechanical experience. I've got a crackerjack mechanical engineer in mind who I, I think would be a great fit for this project. Oh, uh, I usually handle the mechanical engineering work for the company. Anne, right? What's your specialty? You're a mechanical engineer? I'm sure I'll be able to handle anything that comes up. Does the salary for this extra engineer come out of our budget or yours? Oh, ours, of course. It's, it's all part of the liaison package. Oh, that's fine. I'm sure Anne could use the help. Yes, absolutely. I'll be up in D.C. next week for the contractor summit. We should meet up. Yes. You can try that bar you were telling me about. Yeah, yeah, that one, that one. Yeah, no, that's good. All right. Yeah, bye, bye. You too. So, Anne, what's up? We were supposed to go over the Croft Project at two. Right, right, of course. So, obviously we're going to need more space than we have here for the final prototype assembly, right? Oh, I've got the building requirements worked out already. Should I send them to you? No need! Elizabeth's already found us a great warehouse, but there's a catch. It won't be available till September. That should be plenty soon enough. What's the catch? Our lease here expires at the end of May. That's just a few weeks away. Exactly. So, rather than sign up for another whole year here when we'd barely be using it, I've decided everyone will work from home until we get to the assembly phase. That's a pretty radical move. It's brilliant, right? I don't know why we didn't think of this sooner. Virtual companies are all the rage these days. I'm already planning a talk for the entrepreneurs meetup. I don't... I don't know what to say. Say yes. To what? To leading the transition team. We'll need to clear out the lab right away. I mean, everyone will just take whatever they need with them and set up at home. No biggie, right? It's all sub-assemblies at this stage anyway. It's not like they actually need that much space. Couldn't, couldn't Elizabeth do it? No, 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 she's far too busy right now to be bothered with that kind of trivia. Those DOD guys are positively drowning us in bureaucratic nonsense. I couldn't possibly spare her. But, but what about my- bring, bring. Right, so you'll organize the lab shutdown and coordinate with the engineers at home. This could bring, be a good bring. opportunity for you, give you more exposure to the management side of things. Bring, bring. I didn't really want- uh, I should take this. Hold on. I'll just be a minute. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I'll be up in D.C. next week for the contractor summit. Ugh. Why are mornings so early in the day? It's unfair. Drink your tea. You'll feel better. Do you want to reschedule? No, no, no. I feel like death warmed over, but what else is new? I'll be fine. So what are we doing today? I wanted to review the code specs with you guys. Where's Charles? He took the kiddos to the park to run them around a bit. They're probably never coming home, though. It's been hours, and Charles is probably lying dead in a ditch while the little monsters jump up and down on his head, shrieking. And how are the kids? Perfect little beasts. Charles gave them cake for breakfast, the idiot, so they've been bouncing off the walls all morning. I don't suppose I can just banish them to the park all day, right? Does thinking that make me a bad mom? Maybe industrial strength earplugs are the way to go. Or muzzles. Do they make kid muzzles? Well, yes. Uh, how about we hold off on the muzzles for now? Tea. Drink it. 
Have you talked to Henrietta and Louisa recently? Well, I texted them to say how ill I was this morning, and neither of them have responded. Probably off doing something exciting. No time for my boring old problems. I'm sure you'll hear from them soon. Like I care. They talk a mile a minute, never letting you get a word in edgewise, or else they're always on their phones. Oh, Anne, I'm so very unwell. Why didn't we meet last week instead? Mary, last week you said you weren't ready and needed more time. Besides, I've really been so busy with everything that I couldn't possibly have come out any sooner. What? What can you possibly have to do? A great many things, thanks. I was the one stuck with closing down the lab after you all cleared out. I had to disposition all the equipment that no one took with them, figuring out what to sell off and what to just put in storage until the move to San Jose in September. I had to get my garage set up to handle all my tools and equipment. I can't just take my laptop home and get started like some people. And on top of that, I have all my own deliverables to work on. It's no use having control software if there are no mechanisms to control. You've never asked me one word about the pool party yesterday. You went? I assumed you would have stayed home, seeing as how you were so ill. Oh, yes, I went. I was fine yesterday. Nothing at all the matter with me till this morning. It would have been strange if I hadn't gone. Oh, good. Mary, drink up. Ugh, but it's herbal. Hydrate or die. Drink. The party wasn't even all that good. I don't know why I even stayed as long as I did. It's the same boring old music and the same boring old people all the time. Ugh. I probably caught something from one of them. Finally finishes her drink. So, where should we go for lunch? I suppose it's not worth asking Henrietta and Louisa along. They always make us go someplace dumb. You know, I always like the places they pick. Ugh, but they always insist on going to some hippie vegetarian place. Sometimes I just want bacon. Is that so wrong? Okay, okay, I'll call. Oh, look, Louisa just texted. She wants to know if I was feeling better, and do we want to join them for lunch at Hobie's? Well, at least I can get turkey bacon there. Good enough! So, Louisa, now that you're all settled in, how's it been working from home? No complaints here. I mean, I'm still getting paid. The number of pointless meetings I have to attend to has gone way down. And my commute is seriously the best ever. I think it's the best decision Walter's made in ages. Hey! Henrietta, where'd you put the latest version of the data file? Where I always put it, loser. In the folder titled Latest Data. Well, sure, but is that the latest, latest one with the data from this morning? No, because I'm still working on that set. Maybe another hour or so. And do you want me to copy you on the raw data too, or do you just want the summary report when we're done? Oh, you know Anne always needs the raw data anyway. It's not worth slaving over it ourselves if he's just going to check it over again, right, Anne? Well, actually I've got my hands full at the moment. I can wait. Besides, you'll put the raw data in an appendix, right? Of course. But it's just that you're so good at the analysis part. Do you think you can maybe just take a look? Maybe start us off on the write-up? It would let us move on to the next test and stay on schedule with the data collection. Pretty please? Sure. I could manage the unit tests on time if it was just me coding, but you know Charles. He has to go and refactor everything. Mary comments like a drunken wombat. It's such a pain to go back over everything she writes so that the code's actually readable. I hate sending the children to Henrietta and Louisa, though they are always positively begging to take them. They just spoil them too much. Oh, and I wish Mary could just calm down. A little junk food every once in a while won't hurt them. I mean, it's not like refined sugar is actually poison or anything. The only way I know how to keep them in line is with more cake than is probably good for them. But they just turn those puppy dog eyes on me. What can I do? I wish you could persuade Mary not to be such a hypochondriac. I do believe if Charles were to see me dying, he wouldn't think there was anything the matter with me. And I'm sure you could convince him that it's not just lack of sleep or too much caffeine or whatever his latest theory is. It's absurd. Ugh, I just can't stand to be in the same room as Louisa today. Can I help it if I'm just naturally a better gamer? You'd think with all the practice she gets, she wouldn't be such a sore loser. 
Anne, could you get Mary to cut me some slack? She's on the warpath again because I called her and Charles code monkeys. Louisa doesn't care about professionalism at all. People forget my position. As the software lead, I think I am entitled to a little respect. Hey, when's our first design review with the Colonel? In a month. That'll be good. I'm sure I can count on a military grunt to remember our actual titles. At least they have proper respect for hierarchy. Draw two, please. Ah, I should never have invited you to game night. How can you be good at this one, too? Oh, why couldn't that other yellow one come out when I needed it? Oh, Anne, before I forget, we've identified the new ME for your project. She should be joining us next week. I'll send her your information so you can start getting her up to speed. Of course. I'm sure you'll love Captain Wentworth. She's a fantastic engineer. Really knows her stuff, that one. Did you say Wentworth? Ha! Take that! Curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal! Ha 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 General laughter and hilarity. Ten volts at point. Current point five oh amps. Ooh, I can't wait until the new engineer gets here. Point five amps, good. Yeah. What do you think she'll be like? It's been forever since we had a new hire. I'm so excited. Hmm, still cool. No overload. Do, do you think we'll have to call her Sergeant Wentworth all the time? Does she have a first name? Is that allowed? Maybe it's classified. Captain. What? Her rank, it's Captain. Yeah, all those military ranks sound the same to me. I'm planning to use Hey You until we're close enough for first names. Oh, nine volts? Current drop, 0.62 amps. Oh, let's Google her. Maybe there are pictures. 0.62 amps, good. Looks at her phone. Yes, my Google Foo is the best. I totally win the race. Whoa, look at those biceps. Damn. I'm gonna, yeah, uh, I'll be back. And freeze. Eight volt set point. Current draw. Current draw is. Uh oh. There goes the magic smoke. Damn. Is there any way? Oh, no. Okay, no, no. That's fine. We'll figure it out. Get get well soon. <sighs> well, that was the babysitter. She's not gonna make it. Stomach flu. That's just our luck, isn't it? Our first chance to meet the exciting new Captain Wentworth, ruined. Well, I don't know about this wee business. Surely Anne and I could still go to Pride? Weren't you just saying how you had a terrible headache, Mary? Well, I never. I don't see why I should have to stay just because I'm the mom. You, my friend, are equally responsible for the little hellion, so I think you should be the one to stay. Can't we bring them with us? Not after what happened last year. <laughs> yeah. We were definitely hoping to make it past noon this time. Well, crowds and parties aren't really my thing, you know. I'd be happy to stay and look after them. That would be awesome. You don't want to go? It's fine. I, I probably wouldn't have stayed the whole time anyway. Are you sure? I mean, I can't remember the last time the both of us got to go out together and let loose with a bunch of grown-ups. I dare say the little angels won't give you any trouble. They're always on their best behavior for you. Go already. You're the best. Thank you. Goodbye. We'll be home by nine or, or ten. Well, no later than midnight at the very least. Bye. Have fun. Yes. Oh, I'm so dry.
drunk. Oh my goodness. Shh. Oh, no, don't. Don't wake up, Anne. Oh. Anne is sleeping. And then Freddy said, Captain Freddy, <laughs> right, right, Captain Freddy said, plus an arbitrary constant. Okay, I finished burning the new code. Ooh, goody, I bet you two dollars I fixed the bug. Can we test it now? Duh, that's why you're here, right? I thought it was because you enjoyed my scintillating personality and sparkling wit. No, it's definitely just the code. If we wanted sparkling wit, we'd have invited Freddy. That's true, she's hilarious. I really like the story about the remote-controlled flamethrower and a shopping cart. Did you know about that one, Anne? And it sounds exactly like the sort of thing you're always going on about from Mud. So it's about ten times cooler. Oh, did you go to Harvey Mud together? I didn't even know you already knew her until Freddy started telling Mud stories. Henrietta asked her if you two had been there at the same time. She said you'd changed so much since college she barely recognized you. Oh, she looks the same to me. <laughs> Well, if she was as cool back then as she is now, I guess you two wouldn't have hung out much, right? I mean, I'm used to you now and all, but you're not the most extroverted geek I know. Wait, rewind to the flamethrower shopping cart. I missed that story. Oh, it was awesome. So it started out with story time later, code test now. I want my $2. How are you settling in? Are you up to speed on the project so far? Pretty much. I shouldn't have any trouble getting the motor subassembly they need up and running in time for the integration testing. Good, good. How about socially? Bonding with the team all right? You know me. A bunch of us went out last weekend and bonded. There was the usual Military Miss 101 conversation, but after we got past that, the rest of the team was really great. And what about the dating prospects? What was it you said? Ah, yes. How am I supposed to find the dream girl in the Air Force? I need to mingle with nerds, damn it. Yes, thank you. It's good to know that little moment of drunken whining hasn't escaped your memory. Of course not. Why do you think I picked you for this assignment? Because I'm your favorite. Damn straight. But really, are you getting along with the team? Any prospects yet? Maybe. Ooh, is it that clever little mechanical engineer? I liked her. She's the one you were at mud with, right? Anne? <laughs> No, I hardly recognized her. I'm still too scared to be seen at a pride parade. I am so over her. Did you know we actually used to date back in college? It was her experimental lesbian phase, I guess. Ugh. A little awkward. I'm just impatient. I waited years for Don't Ask, Don't Tell to be repealed, and I am overdue for an actual girlfriend. What are you worried about? You're young. I've already wasted my prime dating years being closeted on bases in the middle of nowhere. Now I'm actually out, and in Silicon Valley, on a mostly female team. If I can't find someone to bone now, I don't know when I'll get another chance. So you never had to sleep in a tent in the desert and parachute out of a jet plane behind enemy lines? You watch too many movies. I was stationed in Ohio, not Iraq. Come on, you must have some stories. I did blow up a transformer once. That was pretty exciting. What, like Optimus Prime? <laughs> no. We were testing this huge power transformer, and I got cocky and misplaced a decimal point. Yikes. I did get to use the lab fire extinguisher, though. That was fun. Ooh, all right. Sexy firefighter. That's an image I can endorse. <clears throat> hey. How's the testing going? Oh, hi, Anne. It's going well. We haven't seen any new problems yet, which is awesome. Yeah, and Henrietta's fix for the torque failure seems to be working out, too. Is she around? Shower. She should be out soon. Cool. You know, I practically had to wrench the latest prototype out of Henrietta's hands. She didn't want to include it in this round. Said it was a dumb idea. But I made her. I couldn't believe that she was so chicken. I'd never be so easily dissuaded if it was my idea. She would have given up without you to talk her into it? Yep. Lame, right? When I have made up my mind, I have made it. Henrietta was really confident about the idea when she first told me it, but then what? A few skeptical remarks and she was ready to give it up entirely. 
Lucky her to have someone like you around. I think one of the problems a lot of people have is a lack of creative confidence. So much of engineering is founded in hunches and intuition. Sure, the next step is rigorous analysis and testing and scientific method stuff, but people always forget that the first thing you gotta do is have an idea. If you're too scared to try it, then it's basically the same as never having the idea in the first place. Confidence. That's what I want to see. Ugh. Can't we suspend the shop talk for the duration of lunch at least? I'm just worried we rushed the joint design. Can't you give me more time to tinker with Always it? Always such a worrywart. Stop fussing. It'll work. Look, that's why we're testing. If it works, great. We move on. And if it fails? Then we figure out why it failed and redesign accordingly. But we've got to put it to the test. What did I just say? No more work talk. Freddy. Hobbies? What do you do when you're not designing motors? I like hiking, backpacking, that sort of stuff. I didn't get to do too much at my last base. Ohio's sort of flat. But before that, I was in Tennessee for a few years. The mountains there are gorgeous. I'm happy to be back in California now. The mountains here are fantastic. Favorite trip? That would have been Yosemite, 2006. I got to sleep in an igloo and everything. It was awesome. Whoa, an igloo? Yeah, they're surprisingly warm inside. I think we got ours up to 55 degrees. That sounds kinky. There were six of us. Like I said, kinky. Who were you with? The College Mountaineering Club. It was the annual spring break trip. That's what got me hooked on backpacking. It was a good group. We were always doing something. Have you kept up with any of them? Not really. That was our last big trip before I left for boot camp. When I went to the Air Force, let's just say that not everyone approved of my choices. Is that it? Last one. We have now officially passed the first testing round. Awesome! Go team! Yay! High five! Ooh, yeah. So, what do we do now? Party! We do still need to finish writing the final report. Report schmort. Wait, shouldn't that be report reshmort? No, no, no. Schma reduplication is usually on the first syllable. Hey, I could help with the report. I've got time. Really? You don't have to... I mean, actually, that would be great. Thank you. Hey, I just realized we won't all be in the same place again until we start final assembly. We should totally all do something together for the long weekend. I demand ridiculous shenanigans to tide me over till I see you all again. Oh, well, I just found out some old Air Force buddies are in Monterey. I don't know if a short road trip counts as ridiculous shenanigans. I mentioned you guys, and they said the more the merrier. It could be an adventure. Ooh, you know, I haven't been to Monterey in ages. I'm in. I wouldn't want to impose. Don't be such a fuddy-duddy. We should all go, right, Freddy? I want the whole team to come. Woo! Team bonding event! We're all going! So, what's Croft got you working on this time? The usual. You know... If I told you I'd have to kill you. Bring. Oh, I forgot the rolls. Must be something exciting to drag you all the way out here, especially after all those times you turned me down when I asked you to join us. Aw, uh, you're sweet, but you know your translation device doesn't have nearly enough moving parts to keep my interest. True. I'm glad you looked me up. It's been way too long since our last visit. Goes down and says, Oh, it's so exciting to have you all here. Thank you so much for inviting us all. It's our pleasure. We love any excuse to put all the leaves on the table. It does seem like it'd be a bit big for everyday use. I love the carving on this table. Where'd you find it? Thanks. I made it. I didn't know you could do things like this. He made the bookcases, too. And you should have him show you the project he's got going on in the garage. Very fancy. Gotta keep busy somehow, eh? Now that I'm not running ragged trying to keep up with Freddy anymore, I was bound to pick up a hobby or two. Lies and slander all of it. Don't believe this one's tall tales. Ah, that reminds me. Now I bet Freddy hasn't told you all about the time we went line dancing in Germany. Ooh, sounds juicy. I want to hear that one. <sighs> so embarrassing. Why did I think it was a good idea to have you all meet?
Not much of a gamer. No, not really. More of a reader. Me too. What are you reading now? Don't laugh, but, um, Emma? Jane Austen? I like that one. What made you read it? Well, my Harville sister was really into Austen. She got me hooked. Before that, I just assumed it was girl stuff. Hey. I know, I know. But I didn't know, you know? Anyway, she talked me into reading Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, which I was willing to try because, you know, zombies. It was okay, so after that I tried reading the original, and then I was hooked. Neat. Yeah, except now it sucks because I keep trying to find more authors like Austin, and there's just nothing. I tried picking up a few Regency romances in a used bookstore once, but they were so... Uh, it's just not the same thing at all. So... So now I just reread the same novels over and over again and pine. Have I got some books for you? First try Georgette Heyer. She practically invented the modern Regency romance. Not quite as deep as Austen, but they're good and they're a ton of fun. Fun romance, witty banter, meticulously researched historical detail, they've got it all. Then there's Bujold's Verkosigan books. At first glance it looks like standard space adventure stuff, but the Austen and Heyer influences are clear. Really fabulous characters, really satisfying romance, plus spaceships. Whoa, that's a lot of enthusiasm. Do you really think I'll like them? Yes. You can't just keep reading the same books over and over again. You've got to get out there. Okay, I'll write them down. Tell me the names again. Heyer, H-E-Y-E-R, and Bujold, uh, B-U-J-O-L-D. For Heyer, my favorite is the Grand Sophie. For Bujold, start with Shards of Honor. And add Elizabeth Gaskell, too. Witty Victorian novel, super fun. G-A-S-K-E-L. Gaskell. Cool. Thanks. Batman. Comics or movies? Both. I've been catching up on Batgirl, actually, while I'm on leave. I haven't read any Batgirl since Cassandra Kane. You want to try some? Sure. About Anne. She's single, right? Chronically. How about Ben? Complicated. He was engaged to my sister-in-law. Was? She died last year in Afghanistan. Oh no. We just want to see him happy again. I haven't seen him this animated in ages. It's good. And even though Ben is entirely wrong to prefer Dick Grayson over Tim Drake, it was so great to talk to someone who even had a favorite Robin that I forgave him. Mostly. It's great you two to hit it off so well. Mrs. Harville was telling us last night that he's home from TDY for a couple of months, but has been super depressed. His fiance died. How awful, right? Anyway, they were really happy he seemed to open up to you so much. It was also good to see you having fun for once. Well, as you know, I'm allergic to fun and games. But books and comics, that's in another category entirely. You're such a geek. Oh look, it's Louisa and Freddy. Hey guys! Oh, I'm sure they don't need us crashing their walk. What? Nah, it looks like they're on their way back to the hotel too. Wait up! Hey, wait up! Oh, hey! Good morning. You heading back? Yeah, I'm starving. We should head over soon if we're gonna make brunch. What do you think we're having? I had a rumor there would be waffles, but then again, it could just be a conspiracy. A waffle conspiracy? Oh yeah, it's insidious, really, I mean. Harville said they were working on a translator, but what if that's just a cover? I bet he's secretly part of the Psychological Warfare Department. I mean, it was awfully generous of them to agree to feed us this weekend. But what if it's all part of the plot? We could be unwitting test subjects in some sort of cruel torture experiment. They plant the idea of waffles, get our hopes up, and then instead they serve us soggy cornflakes, instant oatmeal, blood sausages. Ew, gross, now you've ruined my appetite.
waffles are amazing. I love the Harvilles. You are all up early. What'd you do? Anne and I went jogging over to the park. It's beautiful out there. Lots of gorgeous native flora and fauna. Right. Like that guy we saw in the parking lot? The one with the money vanity plate on his ridiculous sports car? Well, that license plate was pretty ridiculous, but he was pretty hot. Hmm, how is that spelled? Four M's. Mary! What? Just because we <clears throat> slept in doesn't mean I have to miss out on hot guys. Yes, I am the best stalker ever. His name is Elliot. He likes fast cars, burning man, sailing, links to a bunch of venture capitalist type stuff. Oh, here's a photo. Oh yeah, I'd let him invest in my startup any day. What a cutie. I'm ashamed to know you. You know you love me, dear. Yes, that too. Is that a Homestuck t-shirt? I didn't think anyone over 30 had even heard of it. Ouch! <laughs> you know there's not actually an age limit on webcomics, right? I liked it a lot. I loved it, but it's too bad it never got finished. Well, that's what fanfic is for, right? Ugh, no. Fanfic is terrible. Depends on what you read, I guess. There's one Regency romance type story where John and Karkat are forced into a marriage of convenience as part of a peace treaty. It was straight up awesome. Sounds right up your alley, actually. What? Oh yeah, I can send you a link to my bookmarks on AO3. I mean, there's tons of fic. Not all of them are gems, of course, but the good ones are so good. So, I know you're going back to the Bay Area soon, but that's not really that far away, right? About an hour drive. Maybe we could get together some weekend and you could show me some of this awesome fanfic. <gasps> Louisa! Louisa! Louisa, are you okay? How? Oh. What's wrong? Where does it hurt? My arms! Ow! Oh no! What do we do? Calm down. It'll be okay. Louisa, did you hit your head? No. Ow. Just my arms. Ben, can you figure out what the nearest emergency room is? Sure. What should I do? Henrietta, you go get the car and bring it around. Just pull over to the curb over there, okay? Okay. Freddy, can you check Louisa over? See if there are any other injuries? Okay, good. That's good. Doesn't look like there's anything else. You've got a couple scrapes on your arms, but none of them are bad. Just a little skin. Okay, okay Freddie's going to touch your arms now. Is that okay? Ow. Yeah, it looks like both of them. Right. That's all right. We'll get you taken care of. Yeah. I called in. They say she should go to urgent care. I can navigate. Thanks. Louisa, whenever you're ready, we're going to help you stand up and walk to the car. Take your time. There's no hurry. Thanks for driving. I don't mind. When will you go back? Tonight. I'll make Henrietta help me pack a bag for Louisa. She'll know what she needs for the next few weeks. It was so nice of the Harvilles to offer to take care of Louisa while she recuperates. They're awesome like that. They probably saw the look of panic on her face when Mary offered her services. A true act of mercy. Drive safe. Good night, Anne. And of course Walter was being his usual self at everyone. I just don't understand how people think he's charming, but they do, and I'm glad, because it means that we've got yet another project lined up after this one. So the finances are actually looking good for the first time in ages. 
But then, of course, Elizabeth had to bring up aliasing again. I swear, I don't even think she knows what it means. She just likes to bring it up at every review to make it look like she's been paying attention. And, well, I know you're going to hate it, but can you add another section to the subsystem overview report about aliasing? Sure. Sure you're going to hate me, or sure you can add it in? We had a problem with the sampling rate on one of the sensors, and when Freddie made the changes to fix it, she also wrote up a great failure analysis report. I can use that. So, it's okay if you don't want to talk about it, but how has it been? Working with Freddie, given your history. Well, it was super awkward at first, but now I guess I'm used to her again. We're not best friends or anything. Certainly not like her and Louisa. They're practically joined at the hip these days. Oh, honey. No, no, I'm fine. It's been really great having the chance to work with her like this. She's a fantastic engineer. Well, okay. But poor Louisa. How long before she's recovered, do you think? It was a pretty bad break on the right side, so they're thinking eight weeks for that arm. The left cast should come off sooner, though. I'm Ouch. Fake this one. Well, we're lucky she and Henrietta work so closely together. There's no way we would have been able to keep to our schedule if we had to bring someone up to speed from scratch on her deliverables. Right. Her deliverables? Oh, that reminds me. Walter says you're on tap for the next status update with the Colonel. Ugh. Do I have to? You know I hate the dog and pony show stuff. Don't be whiny. It's a growth experience. The subassembly verification testing is complete. The validation of the final assembly is on target for successful completion of all milestones by Q1. You don't need to narrate every slide to me. I did read the status update you sent last night. Oh? So, if you've already read all this, what's left to talk about? I was actually hoping to go over the Phase 1 test results before the official design review tomorrow. I had some questions about a few of the results. You... you actually read the report? That's why they pay me the big bucks. So first, let's talk about the torque issue. Looks like the first few rounds of endurance testing were pretty awful. It's totally fixed now, though. Yes, but why didn't you repeat all the endurance tests after the fix? There are two subsystems where torque strength reliability is important, but we only had an issue with the lower system. The upper system doesn't have to support the same load, so it didn't count as a failure. Oh, okay. I see. Hmm. But does that mean if we ever needed increased capacity from the upper system that it would fail too? Oh, no. We made the fix in both areas, but only tested it in the higher load conditions as a worst case. How do you know the fix performs as well in lower load conditions? You do ask the tough questions. Okay. L let me pull up this appendix. I think there's a graph that will make it clear. See, I knew it was the right thing to ask you. I had a few suggestions for the Phase 2 testing, but I wanted to make sure I had a solid grounding in the previous work before I started spouting off. Let's see this graph. So that's the Louisa update. What have you guys been up to? That's the update. Mary, that was 20 minutes on what a good time you had in Monterey, 10 minutes on what's wrong with American healthcare, and maybe five minutes on Louisa, but most of that bit managed to be about you somehow anyway. <laughs> no one appreciates my storytelling genius. I appreciate you, dear. How's the joint scale up going? Have you run the validation test yet? Slowly, and no. I'm waiting until I get moved into the warehouse to do the full scale testing. I bet Anne wants to hear how Ben's doing. Tell her, Mary. Sure. How is Eeyore? Any less gloomy? He's fine, I guess, but he's such an odd duck. I thought he was going to come back with us, but he bailed at the last minute. Why would he come out here? I thought he would have leapt at the chance to get a break from playing nursemaid to Louisa all the time. But apparently he thinks we're too boring or something. I mean, he knows I was kidding about just wanting free babysitting, right? Now, Mary, you know very well what it really was. It was all you're doing. He thought you were still on vacation like the rest of us. When he realized you were going to be off at the warehouse this week, well, he suddenly seemed much less interested in the scheme. That's weird. Oh, he talks of you all the time. And the things he says... You make it sound like he's pining away. So let's pretend in this shot that um, 
Anne and Charles are at the center of the room and they um, sort of move and sit down while this shot is going on. Okay, so that might be going a little far, just it's very clear that he thinks about you a lot. He's always going on about some book you told him about and he wants to talk to you about it. It's all, Anne said this and Anne thinks that with him. Well, it sounds like I definitely need to meet this Ben fellow then, don't I? Yes, yes you do. He's a great guy. I'm sure Russell would like him. He is just your sort. Give him a book and he will read all day long. Yes, exactly. He will sit pouring over his book and not notice when a person speaks to him and is dying for some entertainment. Do you think Russell would like that? He must be an interesting fellow to have produced such a passionately divided opinion. Now I have to meet him. You won't like him. Oh, oh, that reminds me. Have you met this Elliot person yet? Sounds like he's Walter's new BFF or something. It's so wacky that he was in Monterey at the same time as us. I can't believe everyone but me actually saw him. Now there is someone whom I have no wish to see. I'm sure he's a perfectly nice man and all, but anyone who's devoted their entire life to corporate finance just seems like such a terrible bore. I can't imagine we'd have anything to talk about. So the phase one test results were good and we're on track for the ramp up to phase two. There were a few design issues along the way though and that's what I wanted to discuss. So I guess I'll start from page two which shows the results from, oh, before you dive into the details maybe you could summarize. Like Elliot says, if you can't get your idea across in 60 seconds or less you'll never catch the interest of a VC. I'm, I'm sure that's true but this isn't a VC pitch. This is the management review for an incredibly complex system. Oh, well, I've got a doctor's appointment in an hour, so I can't stay longer than that. But we can reschedule a continuation if we don't get through everything now, right? Yes, let's do that. I'm meeting Elliot for lunch, so I can't stay too late either. We're continuing our search for the spiciest South Bay Thai. He knows all the most authentic places. Wow. It, it certainly seems like you've gotten pretty close to this Elliot fellow. We're so lucky. He's got so many connections. He's really going to be invaluable to us. I just know it. You'll have to meet him too. Well, what about this one, Elliot? This one's my favorite, The Gates of Hell. Is it the original? Oh, good question, Elizabeth. Sort of. The piece wasn't finished until after Rodin died. There were three castings produced early on. This one is from a second group of three made later. So it's rare, one of six, but not the only one and not produced while he was alive. So it's sort of up for debate. Oh, that's less interesting then. I thought it was a real one. You don't agree, Anne? I think the mass production aspect just makes it cooler, actually. Go on. I've always been fascinated by the dichotomy between fine art and mass-produced works. There's, there's such a high value placed on scarcity and authorship that it just seems increasingly silly as new technologies for production and distribution become increasingly common. I mean, if a piece of art is really so awesome, then why not share it with as much of the world as possible? I know, right? That's part of what I like about bronzes. Rodin's studio was basically a commercial factory. He worked with a whole team, from the original sculpted model to the final size plaster, then the mold for the actual casting. Wait, final size? They made them at different sizes? Gold star for Anne? Yes! One of the big things about Rodin was his marketing genius. He used a panograph machine to make exact reductions or enlargements. He figured, correctly as it turned out, that offering his sculptures in a variety of sizes would increase rather than decrease demand. Price differentiation, it works. So, are there mini gates around somewhere? Huh, I don't know, that would be cool. But another cool thing, look closely at the individual figures. Some of them look pretty familiar, don't they? It's like a mishmash of all the models he's ever made. Apparently he tinkered with it for something like 37 years, just fiddling with the position of everything. I think technically the Gates of Hell was first, but it took so long and the original commission was cancelled that he started selling off the individual figures as standalones. Whoa! Oh! That's the thinker. I recognize that one. Right. And the one up there is called the Three Shades. 
the full size is just over there. Neat. Yeah. Sorry to hear about the joint failure. Have you found a root cause yet? First I have to find the joint pin. It sort of popped out and flew across the room when I tried to actuate the joint. So, that Elliot kid is pretty cool, right? Sure, he's great. Do you see it anywhere? Well, what's it look like? This small, metal, it can't have gone far. We had the best conversation the other day all about economics and the role of venture capital in shaping American innovation. It's just so refreshing to meet someone his age who's really thinking long term, you know. Oh, he recommended a book to me. It sounded fascinating. Mm. Atlas something? Where could it be hiding? It's not small enough to have rolled all the way under here, is it? Maybe it walked away? Yes, Anne, I'm, I'm sure the joint pin spontaneously sprouted legs when you weren't looking. But anyway, Elliot's definitely been hanging around a lot, right? Yeah, definitely. Walter will be so pleased. I think Elliot's found a new project. Right. Walter is pleased. Aha! Oh, did you find it? Unfortunately. Oh, that is bad. Hold the bags. I'll be back. Elizabeth really takes her dinner party seriously, doesn't she? When I accepted her invitation, I didn't realize I came with chores first. It's worth it, though. Elizabeth's cooking is amazing. You won't regret having to carry a few bags once you've tasted what that woman can do with a Brussels sprout. If I make it that long. Do you think she'll notice if we sneak a few strawberries? I won't tell if you don't. <laughs> Elliot's found a new Himalayan restaurant. Join us! That's cool. I've got plans tonight, but you'll have to tell me how it is. Now, Anne, I know the joint problem is important, but it's okay to take a break once in a while. Aw, oh, Anne, come out with us. It'll be fun. You could stand to get out more, I'm sure. No, I'm, I'm having dinner with my friend Smith. Smith? Right. Let me guess, he's from Canada. I wouldn't know him. She's a friend from high school. We just got back in touch. Well, invite her along. I'm sure we can stretch the reservation to one more person. No thanks. We're planning to stay in. Well, at least I've got Elizabeth. I know she won't abandon me for some hot date. What? I could have a hot date. <laughs> sure. You're a nice mature lady. It could happen. Laughter, laughter. Oh, hilarious. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. You are just as funny as you were in high school. You're just easily amused. I have missed you, though. I'm so glad you emailed me. How did you even find me? You can find anything on the internet if you've got enough free time. And I've had more of that than I wanted lately. So, what happened? Was there an accident? Oh, no. It's just an infection that got out of hand. I'm healing. Just slowly. Still, that's awful. Not my biggest worry at the moment, anyhow. But enough about me. What have you been up to all these years? Tell me everything. I've been at Kellynch for ages. Got hired right out of college. Boring, right? You could never be boring, Anne. Thanks. What about you? I'm just realizing I don't actually know what you do. Talk about boring. Venture capital sounds cool, but the details are seriously snoozeworthy. Well, either that or they're confidential. Aw, uh, come on. I guess you could say it's, it's my job to find opportunities and then figure out how to turn them to the best advantage. I've got a few opportunities at the moment that are looking pretty promising, actually. Oh, right. 
Elizabeth said you were thinking of hiring us. I can attest that Kellynch has the best engineers around. I agree. So, what do you think of these sandwiches? They're one of the hidden gems of San Jose. Awesome, right? Super yummy. The secret ingredient is bacon. Oh, that's pretty. When did you get all crafty? I spent a lot of time laid up this past year. I needed something to keep myself busy. Oh, I like the colors. It'll look great on you. Oh, it's, it's not for me. I have an Etsy shop. Brings in a little extra cash on the side. That's so cool. Thanks. So what should we watch tonight? Well, we could continue our robots theme. Ooh, I haven't seen the Terminator movies in ages. Sound good? I've always had a big crush on Sarah Connor. Can we skip straight to T2? Oh yeah, I always thought the T1000 was pretty hot. Hey, thanks for coming to hang out with me on a Friday night. I know you could have been out on a hot date or something, and it means a lot to me. I think you underestimate the state of my love life. You're kidding, right? I bet you have to beat them off with a stick. Well, okay, it does seem like things have been seeming less dismal in that department lately, but it's way too soon to tell. Let's just watch the movie. You got it. Am I interrupting something? No, I'm just monitoring the test. What's up? So, how are you and Elliot these days? What do you mean? Okay, even you can't be that oblivious. The boy is totally into you. Honestly, I thought you were already dating. We just met a few weeks ago. Hm. You're not getting any younger, my dear. If I were you, I'd make a move. Don't want to let this one get away. He's smart and funny and ambitious. Pretty much the perfect man. And I can assure you, those don't come along too often. No. I suppose not. <laughs> Terrible noise. That's not supposed to happen, right? Nope. Means this one's no good. This is Anne. Grabbing a bottle. Drawing an X on it. Pushing it aside. She grabs the next one. Picks it. Picks it the part. And throws it. Bad part. Bring, bring. The phone says, Elliot calling. She looks at it. Then, then puts it down and goes back to work. An idea. Work, 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 work. Work, 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 work. Just cleaning off the old grease. She gets some graphite, dusts the part. She puts the part on the machine. Hooray, she says. I'm sure you've been having too much fun here in San Jose to care, but I'll tell you what I've been up to anyway. 
Sure. Can you hand me that screwdriver? Here. It's been totally boring ever since you started spending all your time here. Monterey was the last fun thing that happened, and that was ages ago. Mm-hmm. Can you put your hand right here? And, uh, yeah, hold this together for a bit. I know you've been having fun. I've been hearing all about your adventures with this Elliot fellow. No news from you, of course, what did I expect? I had to get it all third hand from Louisa, and she wasn't even here. Oh, right. Louisa's first cast came off last week, so that was some excitement. She must be so happy to finally have the use of at least one arm back. Not that I imagine it wasn't nice to be waited on hand and foot. Got it. You can let go now. And so now I get to the really juicy bits of the story. Turns out Ben and Louisa had a lot of time to get to know each other while she was convalescing at the Harvilles. Oh, really? Really? Changed their relationship status on Facebook and everything. Aw, so cute. You're not mad, right? I mean, I was totally right about Ben not having a thing for you. I knew all along that there was nothing to Charles's little theory. I dare say I was a little surprised on Louisa's part. The way she carried on with Freddie, I could have sworn there was something there, but maybe not. Well, poor Freddie. Now she has to start all over with somebody else. She's due at the warehouse soon, isn't she? We should try to set her up with someone. There's got to be someone we know who's single. Okay, Elliot says he's right outside. Let's go, people. Shea Panisa waits. Are you ready yet, Anne? Come on, it's Friday. Put the work aside for a minute. We're leaving. I'll, I'll be right there. Uh, just give me a sec. Okay, meet you outside. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, Anne, I didn't expect... Freddy, what are you doing here? Walk, walk, walk. I just got in. So, what are... Any antioxidant free? Anne, are you ready yet? I'm starving. Oh, hi, I'm Elliot. Uh, Freddy Wentworth. Awesome. Nice to meet you, Freddy. Sorry to steal Anne from you, but we have to go if we're going to keep our reservation. Bye. I'll see you tomorrow at Mary's. Don't know, cocktail party noise, blah, 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 people milling about, you know, party, party. Da, 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 da. Oh. Hi, Freddy. How have you been? You look great. Hi. I mean, fine. I mean, thank you. Y you look great, too. Thanks. Ever since Monterey, I wanted to say, I mean, sorry to have caused all that drama. It's not much of a team bonding event when one of your team members ends up in the ER. Hey, it wasn't your fault. Luis is fine now, from all accounts, so no lasting harm done. Just some... Interesting developments. You heard about Ben and Louisa? It's sweet. I hope it will work out for them. Yes, of course. It's just... Okay. I confess that I do think they are a little mismatched. I mean, I like Louisa, but Ben is... He's special, all right. I've known him a very long time. He's so thoughtful and introspective, and he just cares so much about everything. I was just really surprised to hear that he had fallen for Louisa. I just don't get it. His attachment to Fanny, to his fiance, was so real and solid. To have all his hopes devastated like that and then just move on? How can someone recover from a relationship like that? I wouldn't. I couldn't. You stayed in Monterey for a while, right? How was it? Good. I biked around a lot, walked on the beach. It's really gorgeous there. I wouldn't mind spending time there again. 
Really? I wouldn't have thought there would be anything special about the place for you, especially given all the drama. I can handle a little drama. I have traveled so little that probably any new place would have been interesting to me. But the Harvilles and, and Ben were so great. I can see why you're friends with them. Elliot! Fantastic! You're just in time for the dancing. Oh, it's so good to see you. Oh, yeah, it's so good to see you. Oh, Anne! Oh, Anne. Yeah, it's so good to see you. Well, we definitely have to start our dancing right away. Oh, Anne, come on, we gotta start dancing. La la la. Ballroom dance montage. Oh, look at them dancing. Ooh, we are so dancing. Dance, 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 everyone. Oh my goodness, look at all of this dancing. Isn't this amazing how dancey we are? Ooh, look at that. Whoa, dance, yeah. Everyone is dancing, even though they're not moving. But pretend like they're dancing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a really amazing dancing going on. All sorts of interesting things are going on during the dance. Um, dance, dance, dance. Probably all the dance. Here's another dance clip. Look at all this dancing. It's amazing how dancey it is. Well, I declare, Miss Anne, you are an excellent dancer, as are you. No, my paltry skills pale in comparison. You're too kind. I'm only okay. I think I've figured out a few things about the mysterious Anne. You are the type of person who is too modest for the world in general to be aware of even half of your talents, and too talented by half to be really as modest as you pretend. This is too much flattery. I couldn't ever flatter you enough. Oh, excuse me for just a moment. Oh, you're not leaving, are you? Yeah, I was heading out. It's really getting late and I should get going. Oh no, this next song's a really good one. Isn't that worth staying for? No. I don't think there's anything worth staying for at this point. Another dance? I love this song. No thanks. I'm all danced out. No, add, add a little more water to thin it out. We just want a highlight wash, not a real paint layer. How's this? Perfect. So, how was the party last night? It was good. So this thing with Elliot's pretty serious, right? Why does everyone think we're dating? You're not just being coy, right? I mean, you would tell me if there was something going on with him. I've known him, what, a month? Maybe two? He seems nice enough, but I barely know him. No, there's really nothing going on with me and Elliot. Oh my god, I'm so relieved. He's sort of a jerk. Whoa. What? You know him? I used to work for him. What happened? It was just contract work for a while, and startups can be volatile, so I didn't think too much of it when my first couple of invoices went unpaid. But after I'd turned in the last package of documents, he cut off contact entirely. That's terrible. I was mad, but I figured the venture had tanked, so I decided to just let it go. But I thought all his businesses were going well. Exactly. When I found out, well, I don't know what to think now. I could really use the money. Medical bills do pile up fast, but I don't want to burn a bridge if I don't have to by taking it to court. I just wish I had a little leverage to get him to pay up, you know? 
Why didn't you say any of this sooner? And I hadn't seen you in years. I wasn't going to make you choose sides in my little drama. Idiot, of course I'm on your side. This contract proposal looks great. I thought you hated this kind of stuff. I'm just so excited about the project that Elliot's offered us. I had my lawyer friend, you know, Smith, help me with the wording. Way to take the initiative, Anne. And gold star for networking. Aren't I always telling you about the importance of making connections? I learned it by watching you. See, I knew giving you more management tasks would be good for you. Stick with me and we'll make something of you yet. Um, I'll just write that email now, Colonel Croft. Um, no time like the present. Um, well, no time like the present. No, Louisa. So, how long before the big announcement, do you think? Long engagement's the worst. I think that if you're hesitating, then it's just not meant to be. Exactly. At some point, you have to wonder if they're really serious about it at all. Speaking of serious, Anne... You sure danced with Elliot a lot on Saturday. Congratulations, girl. I always knew it would take the right man to sweep Anne off her feet. <laughs> huh. To be honest, I always thought you were a lesbian. I like men, too. But Elliot? Nah, he's not really my type. Whatever, Picky McPickerson. Hot, rich, he's everybody's type. Well, Louisa sure turned out to be Ben's type. Where do you think they'll have the wedding? So, Anne, what's your opinion on our little soap opera drama? You mean Louisa and Ben? Yes. Do you go for, for that soulmate business? Or are you more of a love can develop between any two people given the right situation sort of girl? Well, that's a tough question. I'm not sure it's the same for everybody. Ben and Louisa do sound genuinely attached to each other, which is great. But for me, I, I don't think I could change my affections so quickly. No? I mean, once you've really committed to loving someone, given them your whole heart, how is that supposed to ever wear off? Of course, in Ben's case, it would be a little harsh to presume that he could never be able to fall in love again, right? No, of course I didn't mean that. I mean, his fiancée died. Is he just supposed to mope around for the rest of his life, or what? I fully believe that you can love more than one person, and, and so someone who can find a second person to fall in love with, well, they should be congratulated, envied. They're, they're luckier than most of us, at least. You done with that email yet, Captain? Uh, just a few more minutes, sir. Almost done. So you don't begrudge Ben his happiness? No, of course not. But you yourself would never fall for someone you'd only known for a few weeks, right? Uh, I, I'm not trying to be judgmental of them. I really am happy for them. All I'm saying, and, and I'm just talking for myself, you understand, not trying to claim it's like this for everyone. All I'm saying is that when I fall in love, it lasts, even after all hope of a happy ending is gone. No hope? I wouldn't be too sure of that. Um, goes back to his phone. Hands thinking really hard. Huh?
Oh, it's Anne Swan. I can't listen in silence anymore. Email is a poor substitute, but I have to say something. You pierce my soul. I am half agony, half hope. Please don't tell me that I am too late, that your former feelings are gone forever. I offer myself to you again with a heart even more your own than when you almost broke it eight and a half years ago. As pathetic as it may seem, I haven't ever stopped loving you. I may have been bitter and mean and resentful, but I never actually got over you. Ever since the ball, I've been burning to say something, to find out if I really have a chance with you, but I, I couldn't figure out for sure what you were feeling. I'm listening to you now, and my hope is renewed again. Now all I have to do is be brave enough to actually send this and wait for your response. Yours, Freddie. Really big smile. Smooch, 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 smooch. Oh look, it's a giant robot. <laughs>